Hello, my tenfold hatters. Welcome to Tenfold Hat News. This video is, uh, it's not for kids, as it is news. There is no cussing, there is no cursing. And with that being said, I usually age restrict the videos due to getting around YouTube censoring laws, which are now being looked at as illegal. So, let's uh, talk about a more interesting topic. What's happened this past week? So, this past week, uh, what's being talked about is Gavin Newsom silencing doctors, um, especially with a bill that was passed by Democrat senators. Those same Democrat senators who I think have connections and ties to Pfizer, and any doctor who whistleblows and speaks out against the vaccine is going to be losing their medical license. And I think very clearly if we had the Trump administration or somebody from the Supreme, the federal Supreme Court could file charges against the California Democrat Party or members of such, it should be done now. And people are saying, why would I say that? I'm saying because politicians, you're not doctors. And if you think you're going to put something in my body, I don't want you to ever ever talk about women's right to abortion and to anyone who understands what's going on women in America not my tenfold hatters but most women we've seen have been very irresponsible and it's a track record and women you need to help hold your fellow women accountable for being irresponsible now, I'm not going to sit here and say that I fully disagree with abortion. Uh, there are very serious situations that warrant it. Uh, rape, incest, um, medical conditions. Those, a lot of us, everyone universally agrees. You know, even the pro-lifers are willing to make the exception for those. What I don't agree with is the fact that we have a lot of contraceptives. Uh, women getting with guys not wearing condoms. And I don't agree with women being irresponsible. They can give the kid up for adoption, you know. And as a male, it's in living in the United States, if you've ever seen the biggest problem of sexism look no more than family court system if you're, you're a man they will villainize you they will chastise you and if they were given the chance they will try to castrate you it's because our family court system is very much in a bad situation now how what does that do relate to abortion well the Dems are in with Pfizer, and Pfizer, anything else, needs stem cells. So for them, they would love to get stem cells from aborted, unborn children. And they would do this to go ahead and make a profit because they want to make it all the way up after birth. So, when the baby's alive, and that's dangerous. Uh, the Supreme Court, the judges made a statement saying, well, when does the baby have rights? When they're not being able, when they don't need to necessarily stay in the womb. And they deferred to the state's judgment. Now, I know I'm going to hear a bunch of people like, how could you... Be like this with... You don't understand. I'm like, look, here's what I don't understand. You have... The plan B, you got condoms, you got contraceptives. You have ways of not getting pregnant. And to these women that are trying to be a gold digger, there should be laws against said women. Because, A, you need to... It has to stop. B... Trapping a man should be illegal. 
and see women, modern women in Western countries need to start taking more responsibilities as adults. And I know people like say, well, you're being rude. I'm like, am I? What's even more rude? Allowing a person to make the same mistake? Or calling out the person saying, hey, look, I can't have you making the mistake. You need to be responsible. And that's why I look at this whole situation very differently. The fact that it's backed by greed and the fact that the Democrats really didn't care about abortion. They just needed it so they can stay in office and power and pass draconian law such as the one that denies doctors First Amendment rights and threatens to take their licenses away, which is a constitutional no-no. It also prevents people from speaking out against malpractice. And this situation is scary that a drug company like Pfizer has that much control. It's almost to the point that it's made people very stupid. There are people who say, I can't believe you don't trust the vaccine. And I says, I didn't say I didn't trust vaccines. I just don't trust this one because it wasn't properly tested. I have a medical background. First thing they teach you about vaccines and viruses, if your body has already gotten the virus and you have an immunity, you don't need the vaccine. Your natural immunity has already made its vaccine. Natural immunity is always better than the vaccine. Yet somehow, Pfizer has convinced an entire group of people. They've managed, if you look at Nancy Pelosi and all the Democrats, they have their hands in big pharma. And I'm not going to lie, there are Republicans too, such as... Well, I'll have to take a look into it. But you have Republicans in it, rhinos, that have their hands in big pharma. And the biggest threat to our country is the drug industries that we don't regulate. We go after the cartel for their narcotics. But Pfizer and GlaxoSmithKline and other drug companies would like to remind you that what they do is okay, even though they're behind the biggest opiate epidemic that makes the cartel look petty. And I say this without being a jerk, but all the craziness. Other things that have happened, uh, you have the situation where now they're sending Venezuelans back to Mexico. People fleeing communism. I guess... Abbott and Ron DeSantis' plan of busing migrants to Democrat cities finally are working. Now, I saw this video, and it was uh, sort of from a local news agency based in Texas. And a lot of thoughts were going through my head. Um, First thought, wow. Second thought is, are are they really going to ban migrants? Are they trying to ban people who were escaping communism because apparently the Latino community turned on the Democrats because they don't like communism. And you have people like Anna Navarro. She's not a politician, but she's like, why does Deron DeSantis and all these people prop up all these uh, uh, survivors of communism and socialism as, as political pawns? And I'm going to be honest with you. Anna Navarro is an anti-Semite. And, um, you know, we just have to ask the question, Hey, Anna Navarro, why don't you leave the U.S. and go live in Cuba? Or go live in Venezuela? Or, I don't know, move to China. Just get the hell out of America. If you love communism so bad. We, as Americans, cannot do it. We like to taste the fruits of our nature. We don't like government taking those said fruits that we work for away from us. We don't want to give it to the lazy. And the problem is, I feel like the Democrats are trying to send back the people to communist countries. (sighs) 
and it's very disturbing. I, I don't know why they say Venezuelan, but it's making me wonder if they're trying to send back the people from communist countries because they're afraid that they're going to vote Republican. Because the agenda of the Democrats was to bring in all the illegals and put them in red states so they can their children can vote blue. Well, the red states said, no, we're not going to take this, so we're sending to the blue states. Then they get pissed off, and it's like, look, you blue states want to be a sanctuary state? Fine. That thing on the Statue of Liberty, bring me your hunger, bring me your tired, bring me your poor. That is the motto for only New York. It doesn't represent the entire country. And if you haven't been to the United States and visited the other states, I'm going to tell you this. If you think New York's motto is the entire U.S., you're an idiot. And despite what pro-immigrant officials say, which is, I figure, very uh, messed up and promotes genocide of indigenous people, we're not all immigrants. You have the Amanazi, the Navajo, Yaqui, Pima, Cherokee, uh, the freaking Shoshone, the Alaskan Inuits. You have American Samoans. You have Native Hawaiian. There are people who are indigenous to the United States. And if you morons go on talking about everyone's an immigrant, I hope you stop to think and realize not everyone was an immigrant. And if you continue to keep saying that, I hope you get punched in the face. I don't advocate for violence, but it's like saying very messed up things like the N-word or any other, you know, stuff. I don't think white liberals should speak for people of color. So pink hair people, shut up. We don't care. All right. You were never worth anything to begin with, and no one cared what you thought. You're just occupying space. You're not thought-provoking. You couldn't become an engineer. You couldn't do hardcore science. So you went to your gender studies class, and you can't pay off the debt, and you expect us to pay for it. And I just have to say, the world would be better off if you didn't exist. I know that sounds mean, but hey, that's true. And as for that news, just when you go vote in November, vote Republican. If any time to vote Republican, this would be now. Because right now, the current person fighting for our freedom and to stop the Great Reset is the leader of Russia. I know. The whole thing with Ukraine, this is just part of the Great Reset started by George Soros. By the way, Ukraine has some Nazi leanings. I have nothing against Ukraine. I think this war should have never happened. And I blame Biden for opening his mouth. On top of that, the situation is is bad. I don't know about the blowing up the Crimea Bridge, but I'm worried about civilian casualties in Russian Crimea. All right? A civilian is a civilian is a civilian. I want the war in Ukraine and Russia. I want the war to end. And Zelensky talking about we should have the nukes fly, I think that is selfish. If there's any chance to ending this war, let's do it. But as for Klaus Schwab and George Soros, they're the ones who want this war. Ukraine can never be a NATO nation because they supported the Nazis. And if anyone has any intelligence, this war shouldn't be happening. My thing is, I'm not for the Russians taking over and invading territory. But I'm also not for massive war happening. If there's a solution to keep peace and freedom, fine. I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, Putin is the great bad guy. If Putin is willing to listen and come up with a peace agreement and they're willing to come up with some sort of peace agreement, I'm fine with that. But we have to get there. All the old beefs, all that stuff has to go away. 
in order to move forward. So, as far as I'm concerned, as an American citizen, I don't support the war in Ukraine. Uh, Donald Trump wants to has a plan to diplomatically um, defuse the war, yet it ended, and I'm all for it. And I blame the current president for opening his mouth and kicking off this war. I'm sorry, but Joe Biden started it off of, face, off of a fake thing that Hillary came up, and he went up and he accused Putin in the first place of a false narrative that Russia meddled in America's election when it comes to find out they never did. And it, that is the reason why this whole thing got kicked off. So, other than that, I will say this. So my tinfoil hatters, do not, number one, do not commit an act of violence or a crime. Number two, help people out. You know, get active in looking at the homeless situation. How can we make it better? What can we do to, to create a better environment? Number three, go to schools where they're low income, where they're not getting the proper education. Get those kids some books. You know how you get people to stop being poor? You go out, you get them books, you teach them to read, you teach them math and science, and you help them learn how to get money in their pocket and make money because you'll feed them for a lifetime. And if you can, I suggest let's get them books. Let's help them out. Number four, I ask of my 10 foilers, if you can grow food in your house, start doing so. Because right now, inflation's high. Let's do that. Number five, if you can vote, vote. Get familiar with the current propositions being proposed. Be familiar with the with the current political situation in your town and just talk to people and see what's really going on. Do not, and I repeat, do not let people with political ads fool you. This election, I feel like I'm going to vote no on everything. I've seen propositions, you know, they got one says, please help subsidize the, the funding for school arts. I live in California. And I can't support this proposition because it's going to take more from my income tax. And the reason why I'm not supporting the proposition is, well, we could take the funding from the Democrats' general fund. Because what they do is, in California, in Illinois, and New York, all that money is supposed to go to schools goes directly to a politician's pocket. And as a person who grew up in a blue state, the education system is somewhat semi-abysmal. Now, I got lucky. School I went to had some people, you know, good backgrounds. Um, you know, I got to a school that had a lot, you know, had, had Asian kids and stuff like that. And, you know, they're very scholastic and school-minded. I am blessed. Granted, I'm not rich, but hey, it worked out. And guess what? When I got out of high school, I knew I had to go into the military and make something of myself. But schools in California are not the best. And I'll be honest, we had to start adopting Texas formats in order to understand mathematical equations so we can go to college. That is how bad California schools are. And I'm not going to vote to support the arts in California because... I know that it's a Democrat politicians are not going to give it to the arts. They're not going to give it. They're not going to give it to the things they need in school. And what schools need is shop class. If you don't believe me, look at Los Angeles. No shop class, no engineering class, none of those things. That's what happens when your state is overran by Democrats. I'm lucky I'm a red, in a red part of California where we got to keep all those things. But L.A., those people are screwed. And it's bad. So... Other than that, good luck, be good, be kind, don't commit any crime, and if you can, let's start teaching kids good stuff, and let's help out, 
um, impoverished neighborhoods, you know, getting them books, you know, teaching them a new skill set so they're not broke and they can feed themselves. That's all they need.